The focus of this lesson is on solving systems of nonlinear equations. So when we talk about nonlinear equations, we're saying within the system, one of the equations is not a line. So if you look at the graph that I have that goes with our system, notice um, for the first equation, that equation is linear, and so the blue part of the graph represents the line that's formed by that equation. Um, the second equation actually forms a hyperbola, and um, based off the window that I have here for my graph, we can't see the entire hyperbola, but you could see this first piece here, and you can kind of see a little bit of the second piece. So um, from looking at this graph, it appears as though we have two solutions when the line intersects the hyperbola. And you can kind of see the points that appear to be solutions. So we would expect when we go through and do our algebra to get two solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and walk us through the procedure and do the example so we can see how we work out um, a system that's nonlinear. So ultimately you're going to choose whether you'd perform your solving steps using the method of substitution versus elimination. So to do that you want to kind of pause and analyze your system first. And as you can see in this first equation you have an X and you have a Y and in the second equation you don't have like an individual X and an individual Y. So if you were to try to do elimination um, that would not be straightforward. So it would make sense to choose the method of substitution. So our first step is to choose the method of substitution to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and if I use the method of substitution that means I have to go through the procedure of substitution. So I'm going to start with one of my equations and solve for a variable. So um, again I chose the method of substitution. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and just take the first equation and I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract off y from both sides. So I get x equals negative y plus 8. So all I did was rearrange my first equation. And then I'm going to sub that into my second equation which is xy equals 15. So if we do that and we do this substitution step x is negative y plus 8, so plug that into x in the second equation. So we get negative y plus 8 is my x times my y is 15. So that's the substitution step. So then I just need to distribute this y on both pieces here. y times negative y is negative y to the second. 8 and y um, when multiplied together is 8y equals 15. So you can see we're left with a quadratic. I like my leading coefficient on my square term to be positive, so I'm going to move everything to the right hand side of the equation. So I'm going to add y squared and subtract 8y. And so when I do that, that'll leave me 0 on the left, and I'll get positive y squared minus 8y and then 15 was already on the right hand side so it does not change signs. And this is a factorable quadratic so we're going to focus on factoring it. We know t y times y gives us y squared and then we have to think about what two numbers multiply together to give us 15 but add to give us negative 8 and the answer is negative 5 and negative 3. So if we solve each of those factors by setting them equal to 0, we come up with y is 5 and y is 3. And you might feel like, wow, I just did a whole process through, I'm done, but all you've done is the second step of our procedure and solved for the first variable. We solved for the y, so we haven't solved for the x yet. So then, um, that's our next step, and so we're going to solve for x, and the way we're going to solve for x is we're going to go to one of our two equations, it doesn't matter which, if you always want to pick the first one you could do that, so it's um, just kind of the same procedure for you over and over again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write the first equation down, x plus y is 8, 
So this is of our original system. And I'm going to start off by letting y be 5. And then I will do the same thing again, but I will let not y be 5, but I'll let y be 3, because we have both scenarios to go through. So if y is 5, we have x plus 5, because that's our y, is 8. Subtract 5 from both sides, we see x is 3. So we get the ordered pair, that's the solution, 3, 5, or so we think. We do have to actually check it at the end of the day. Um, and then we would go through and we do the same thing. If y is 3, we get x plus 3 is 8. Subtract 3 from both sides, we get x is 5. So it appears we get the solution 5 comma 3. But um, that is the third step of our procedure. So we ultimately have both variables solved for. Um, so if there were two y's, we should end up with two ordered pairs. If there were four y's, we should have ended up with four ordered pairs, etc. Um, so we do have our two ordered pairs, but then we ultimately have to check these. We have to verify if these are actually solutions. And so when we go to do our verification step, we need to verify into the equation that we didn't use. So we used the first equation, x plus y is 8 to get our second variable. So we need to use the other equation. So the xy equals 15, that's from our system. And then ultimately we need to check both ordered pairs. So, um, so we're going to kind of verify twice here um, into the same equation. But our first verification is for the ordered pair 3, 5, and our second verification is for the ordered pair 5, 3. But if x is 3 and y is 5, is that 15? Yes, 15 is 15. That's a true statement. So that, that comes out to be true, so that means 3, 5 is a solution. So when I go to write my solution set, I know that 3, 5 is within that set. Now if I check 5, 3, we're saying x is 5, y is 3, does that equal 15? Well, yes, 15 equals 15 is true. So that means the ordered pair that I just checked, 5, 3, is also part of my solution set. So I'm left with a solution set of two ordered pairs, which makes sense if you go back to the graph and you see where that line intersects the hyperbola, it intersects at two places, so it makes sense that we have two solutions.